I've had my hands on the Samsung Galaxy A05s for about two weeks now, and I purchased this device for 150,000 naira or $130. And boy, do I have some juicy tales to spill. I'm gonna help you decide if this device is actually worth it or whether you should take your money elsewhere. And so without taking much of your time, yo guys, let's get started. As far as design here, Samsung followed the best routes through this year. Everything they produced last year and this year all look like the S23 lineup. Simply put, the Galaxy A05s here is a device that has put the flashy flare into a jaw-dropping price tag. One thing I've come to love about this budget devices include the fact that they retain a lot of the features we no longer find in the high-end devices, like these other ones I dropped on the table here. For example, you have a dual SIM tray with its trusty sidekick, and that is the dedicated micro SD card slot. If you need more storage, no problem. You can expand this using this slot to up to a terabyte. If you want to juggle between two numbers, easy peasy, you have the dual SIM tray. Do you have a wired headphone laying somewhere? This has got you covered. You do not have an explicit need for a wireless Bluetooth headphone as you have the jack port here, a 3.5mm jack port on the Galaxy A05s. Let's touch on security here. You get a fingerprint scanner mounted at the side, doubling as the power button, and you also get a face unlock feature with this device. One thing I love about the buttons here is how tactile they feel. That is the power button alongside the volume rockers, which are found to the right side of the smartphone. You might not get that clicky tactile button you get on the Pixel devices here, but these are close to what you get from the S23 Ultra. So one problem for me here is Okay, you do realize that this device isn't a 5G device and that's one thing you can get for devices around this price point, just like you get on the ITEL device that was recently released. You also have radio capability with this one here and that only happens when you plug in an earphone to the headphone jack and that also acts as the antenna for the radio. Now you get a mono down firing speaker which is quite disappointing here. At maximum volume, well, things get a little wild. The audio becomes a tad unclear and also distortion sneaks in here. But hey, this is a budget entry device so it's doing its best with the tools it's got. So if you're up for a budget friendly jam session, the Galaxy A05 would rock your playlist but do not expect anything extraordinary. Now over to the display side of things, you get a 6.7 inch 20 by 9 display which has a 90Hz refresh rate on this device with full HD resolution which is 1080p. This is also an LCD panel and when you go outdoors, viewing angles are nice, although the brightness on this display isn't the brightest when you use it under direct sunlight. Now I also did realize that on the Galaxy A05s, there's no setting to switch between 60 and 90Hz refresh rates or even an adaptive refresh rate. So you basically can select your refresh rates if you want to do that. Now that isn't a problem for me as I'm all about the 90Hz refresh rate for a minimum. Just so you know, you do not have that option here. Also that is such a minor thing that can be fixed in a software update sometime down the road. The colors on this panel here are really impressive. I mean, I trust Samsung with these displays as they've mastered this department. So you have colorful displays, impressive colors with this panel on the Galaxy A05. You can get this device in different memory configurations starting from 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, 4 gigs 128 and also 6 gigs 128 gigs, all which somehow affect the performance on the smartphone. The unit I have here is that of 4 gigs and 128 gigs variant, as that was the only available memory configuration in my region at the time of making this video. As far as the software updates here, we are expecting a minimum of 4 years of software support, which should be 3 years OS updates and an additional year of security patch. So out of the box, you get Android 13 on this device and One UI Core 5.1, which is basically a slimmed down version of One UI without all the features baked in. For performance and processing, coupled with the memory configuration is the Snapdragon 680 chipset here. I'm actually glad they threw this on here. You get smooth animations, smooth scrolls, enough performance for day-to-day -day activities and generally optimized for mobile gaming. Before I discuss how this device handles mobile games, you can also see for yourself scores from various benchmarking apps starting with Antutu Benchmark, Geekbench 6 and the PC Mac for Android here. I mean these are numbers we can expect for this kind of processor. Like I earlier mentioned, the processor here, which is the Snapdragon 680, is quite optimized for gaming. Maybe not the best gaming chipset out there, but it actually gets the job done. Now, will you notice dropped frames when you play mobile games like Call of Duty or PUBG? Well, yes, but not right in your face as this is really optimized for gaming. Of course, you still can tell that this is a budget device with the graphics you see on here, but this is quite impressive for the price. Now, Call of Duty graphics can go up to very high quality graphics and high frame rates with this device. PUBG on the other hand is limited to a balanced graphics and medium frame rates and the performance is quite good. Asphalt 9 plays well here, so generally this is decent at gaming, but yet again, 
anyone getting this device isn't really looking for a game game device, you know. This smartphone boasts a multi-lens system, three rear lenses to be precise. These cameras are a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 2 megapixel depth sensor, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. As long as you have good lighting here, this smartphone's camera would be a delight for the price. You know, dynamic range is quite impressive if you ask me, and you might mistake this device for some better device. As with most Samsung devices, you'd get good contrast and saturation giving you thick colors, but that doesn't quite take you to the oversaturated territory. And as far as white balance, I would like to say this is quite close to reality. The macro lens isn't something I would love to use, I'd rather take a close up using the main lens and then crop in as that's the better quality you get from this device. Video isn't the best thing when it comes to these cameras. Despite giving the device good lighting, stabilization for the video also isn't something I'd want to use that much. I'd also rather have this device on a gimbal or mounted on a tripod for stabilization. You do not get up to 4K video recording here as you are limited to 1080p 120fps for slow motion and 1080p 60fps for your regular video. Videos. Over to the front facing camera, you get yourself a 30 megapixel sensor in the dewdrop notch, which impressively has a wide field of view. So you wouldn't have a problem fitting in a lot of people if you want to take a group selfie. When it comes to the photos, they are really processed to look smooth, which isn't my best taste as far as photos, but you can get decent photos as far as the lighting is right with this device. Video recording on the other hand maxes out at 1080p 30fps for the front facing camera. So guys, um, this is a video, front facing camera video test and comparison between the Galaxy A05 and the Galaxy A05s. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I can see more magenta on this one to the left, which is the, um, the A05s, and a lot of noise actually, but it just feels like this is a better camera. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Now let's talk about the power on this guy. This bad boy comes with a 5000 mAh battery that's practically begging to get used. So I did hook up this smartphone to a 25 watt charger and watch the magic happen. 0 to 100 in under an hour 25 minutes. Now the problem with this device is the fact that you do not get a charger out of the box. But I'm going to come back to that. Clocking in at a cool 7 hours for the screen on time here, this smartphone can outlast a Netflix marathon or survive the endless scrolling through your favorite social media platforms. This is pretty much a two-day device for an average user, but one thing to remember is to bring your own charger as there is none within the box. So out of the box, you only get the smartphone, SIM ejector, and a USB cable. I really do wish we had a charging brick here actually because that's some extra cost for someone getting a budget device. So here's the lowdown. After all, I can't help but feel like in this price range, we could be riding a 5G device. There are other devices in this price range with that modem in there. So that means they would have changed the processor on this device. We also could have gotten a better video quality, probably NFC for, you know, payments. Yeah, but this device isn't all doom and gloom though. You get a good display quality here, a really good performance for the price. In fact, better than the Samsung Galaxy A14 from last year, I think that's about this device. And you also get a headphone jack, which is still retained here. There's an FM radio on here and the great battery life on here is also another reason you would want to pick up this device. So let me know in the comment section below if this is one you would pick up. But again, you can check out my review on the bare bones Galaxy A05 here. Koi that day.